Hi, I'm Mick and this is Hammer the Backlog. Over the last two years, I've been blogging and vlogging about my ongoing project of painting my 25 years of unpainted Warhammer fantasy and 40k minis before the inevitable heat death of the universe. You can check out some of the videos in the links below. The focus of this week's video is my original 4th edition Blood Bowl set, written and designed by legend of the industry Jervis Johnson and published by Games Workshop in 2002. Kinda. Although my box set is from the 4th edition release, the actual contents of the 1996 3rd edition release and the 2002 4th edition release are virtually identical. The only difference is the handbook, which was two books in 3rd edition and one book in 4th. That means that the models in this book were first released in 1996 and holy moly can you tell. They're the epitome of 1996 monopose plastics, but we'll take a closer look at them in a few minutes. Unlike my Warhammer Fantasy Battles 5th edition starter set, which is now one of my core teenage memories, I have no idea where this set came from. I must have bought it sometime in the early 2000s, with every intention of getting it painted up and playing a few games. But, like everything else in the Hammer the Backlog project, I just didn't. So here we are, 20 years later, with a complete set. I got the ball rolling, if you'll excuse the pun, with the human team representing the Reichland Reavers. I went with the classic blue, metal and white scheme of the box art here, and I'm glad that I did. These were great fun, classic, simple minis to paint. Not over detailed or distracting, just perfect. They were all sprayed white, which was the tradition of the time, but then I abandoned the slog of the classic painting method and painted them mostly with modern contrast paints and highlights. I'm most pleased with the fact that I got to use the original decals from the box. These things must be at least 25 years old, but they went on well thanks to a little bit of patience and massive improvements in decal technology since 1996. I painted the orc team, the gouged eye, using the exact same method, but with more green, obviously. Despite collecting Warhammer minis since the mid-90s, I've painted surprisingly few orcs, making these little fellas a real treat. The vibe of orcs has changed a lot since 1996. These lads are a lot shorter and squatter than a human of the time. These bases, by the way, are not goblin green. They're war boss green, a very easily available modern paint that does pretty much exactly the same job. You would be able to tell the difference if they were side by side with some real goblin green bases, but they're not, so why worry? The first thing that me and my perennial rival and nemesis doctor coach Jim had to do was learn the basics of playing Blood Bowl. Luckily, 2002 Games Workshop very kindly included a learn to play booklet in the box. Let's go through the steps together. Jim decided that he would play as the humans this time, and I, being shorter, squatter and ruder, got the orcs. We each got two players and placed them on the board as you can see. Each player can do one of five basic actions. Move, block, pass, blitz or foul. Jim's lovely clean humans took the first turn and his lineman, Adalbert Bauer, decided to move six squares towards the orc linesman. Since he never crosses another player's tackle zone, there were no dice to roll and he succeeded automatically. Jim then decided to move his other player, Carl Schneider, up to support Adelberth. Since Carl is standing next to an orc, he will have to dodge to get out of the square without getting knocked on his pasty human ass. Jim's human linesman will need a 3 or higher on a d6 to get away from the orc. He rolls a 5 and completes his move without issue. Since Jim has completed all his moves, it's now my turn. Time for some good old fashioned orky violence. My orc, Garbag the Boulder, throws his full weight at Adelberth. Since they have the same strength, he will roll one of the special block dice and check the result. Defender down. 
Since Garbeg knocked Adelberth down, he rolled 2d6 to try and beat the human's armour score and cause an injury. He rolls a 6. Adelberth is fine and will be able to get up on the next turn. With violence still on my mind, I decide to use a blitz action with my remaining orc, Grom the Slow. This is a special action I can only do once per turn, but it allows me to move and block in a single action. Grom rushes towards Carl and shoulder slams into him. Since 1996 humans and orcs have the same strength value, I roll one dice. I get the both down result. Neither player has got the best of the tackle, and both are knocked on their asses. Jim and I both roll for the opponent's armour save, but no one gets hurt. It is just a game after all. It's not all about running at each other at full speed. Some teams try to use skill to win, so we also had to learn about passing. This time Carl and Adelberth are alone against Grom. Garbeg, the other orc, saw a funny looking goblin and ran off after it. Carl has the ball and Adelbert is already in the end zone. Things are looking grim for the orcs here. Jim decides that Carl will pass the ball, so he takes out the plastic range ruler, which is helpfully transparent, and places it over Carl's head. Adelbert is fully within the short pass range, meaning he needs a four or better to pass successfully. Butterfinger's Berth, as he's also known, rolls a two and completely messes up the throw. The ball is not going to land anywhere near where he wanted. Instead of Carl catching it, we use the scatter template and the special scatter dice three times to see where the ball bounces. We roll a one, a four, and another one. The ball bounces right into hapless Grom's hands. He tries to catch it. Since it's a bounce, he'll need a four or more. I roll a four. Grom catches the ball. An interception. The human turn ends and the orcs have a chance to score. With the basic rules learned, Jim and I played a play of the game. It's a beautiful day in the Reichland, with old rivals the Reichland Reavers, the best team in the league, taking to their home pitch against the toughest team in the league, the Gouged Eye. We toss a coin for the kickoff. Jim wins and chooses to have me kick off. The Orcs take to the field, a classic symmetrical setup to allow them to cover any gaps, with two players in the back to catch the ball. The Reavers take to the field in reaction to this, leaving two throwers at the back to collect the ball and arranging their linesmen and blitzers to have maximum impact on the Orc front lines, ganging up wherever possible without leaving too many exploitable gaps. The Orcs kick deep and the ball scatters, bouncing out of play. The eager crowd immediately throws the ball back in in a random direction, decided by the template, and a distance decided by the D6. With the ball back on the field close to Jim's throwers, the Reavers are ready to start their first drive. Jim's thrower Gunther Klein moves back to pick up the ball. He rolls a six for the pickup and deftly snatches it up. What could go wrong? He moves up another couple of spaces and opts for a short pass to the other thrower. Jim rolls for the short pass, getting a one, a fumble. Klein drops the ball, distracted obviously by an attractive orc cheerleader, and we have our first turnover, ending the human turn. In the orc turn, both orc blitzers, Grog and Rog, move to the gaps in the human line, forming a threatening pincer around the ball and the unsupported throwers. Time for some classic orc bully tactics. The rest of the orcs move up to fill in the gaps in the line of scrimmage and start throwing their weight around. Despite some pushing and shoving, no injuries are caused. Back to the humans. Not letting himself be bullied by the orcs, Jim manages to position two of his players against one of the isolated orc linesmen and gets to roll two dice, choosing the highest. He rolls two skulls, attacker down, a disaster for Jim. Jim decides to use one of his precious team rerolls to try again. The orc, previously known as Urbag the Handsome, gets absolutely smashed in the face and knocked completely unconscious. Urbag the Ugly, as he's now known, goes to the injured bin. Meanwhile, Jim's catcher, Maximilian Schaefer, scoots around a gap on the outside and moves deep into the orc half. 
Back in Jim's half, Butterfingers Klein has a chance to redeem himself, picking up the ball successfully, running forward and handing it off to the other thrower's waiting hands. The second thrower, Klein's younger and more successful brother Travis Klein, sprints through a gap that has appeared in all the pushing and shoving on the scrimmage line and makes it right up to Max Schaefer. The Orcs are in trouble and they know it. My Blitzers have a movement of six, but they're nine squares away from being able to intercept. My Blitzer, Gareth the Orc, decides to go for it. He moves his six spaces as normal, pushing himself to make up the rest of the distance. He makes it far enough to get into the tackle zone around the humans, meaning passing and moving will be much harder for them next turn. In his next turn, Jim attempts another handover pass from the thrower to the catcher. He fails to catch it on a two! But Jim uses another of his precious re-rolls and gets a five, a successful handoff. All Schaefer needs to do is escape the tackle zone and dash to the end zone. Out of nowhere, one of Jim's linesmen, Inglebury Meyer, declares a blitz, barreling into the orc tackle zone and knocking one of the orcs down. Now, suddenly in the clear, Schaefer dashes for the end zone, scoring a touchdown for the Reavers. Well, that's all we have time for this episode. I do hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane as much as Jim and I did. We've played a little bit more Blood Bowl since and have thoroughly enjoyed it. It's fast and random and relatively rules light, and as far as I know, the modern version of the game is still pretty similar. If you enjoyed this and you'd like to see more of my projects as I hammered through 30 years of unpainted Warhammer miniatures, please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching this though, you're good eggs. <laughs>